One of the best things about this Transalp 750 is the really cool electronic suite that it comes with. It's not something you usually see on motorcycles that cost less than $10,000 or right at $10,000 in the case of this bike. So let me walk you through all the options and menus so that you can get a sense of what all this thing's got going on. There's quite a bit. This is the main screen. This is what you're looking at while you're riding the motorcycle. This light, this is the traction control light, that's the ABS light. They're on right now because those two systems, when you first start the bike and start riding, they initialize. Obviously the bike's in neutral, so the neutral light here, but it's also got a gear indicator here. So just looking at the main screen, a couple things I like. Side stand indicator, that's nice to have right in front of you. This oil pressure light is also a check light that goes away when you first start riding. You got clock, this is the engine temperature. I haven't found an ambient temperature yet, which actually annoys me because it's one of my favorite things to have on an adventure bike, but small price to pay, I suppose. There's actually four different configurations for this main dash and three different colors that you can have behind it. I've got it in white because it shows up better when I'm filming, but there's a white background, a metallic gray background, and a black background, and there's also four different configurations of where your tack, speedometer, or fuel gauge are, which I'll show you. Over here is where it shows you where the modes are, so what mode you're in. So there's a mode button on the handlebar, which I'll show you at the end, and that's how you switch between the default mode, sport, standard, rain, uh, gravel, and there's the user mode. So these things are each of the features that are controlled by the modes that are adjusted by the mode. So P is engine power, EB is engine braking, T is actually traction control, Honda calls it torque control. So I made a whole video talking about torque control, but nobody knows what that is. So this is traction control, and then this is the ABS indicator. And you can see, so sport mode has full power, minimal engine braking, minimal traction control, full ABS. Standard mode is a little bit less power, more engine braking, a little bit more traction control, full ABS. Rain, very little power, more engine braking, full traction control, full ABS. And gravel is half power, full engine braking, almost full traction control and off-road ABS, which is both wheels, but a little less aggressive than on-road ABS. And I'll show you how you can shut ABS all the way off in a second. And then there's user mode, and you can adjust all of these things in the menu. You can also adjust them on the fly while you're riding, or at least without going into the menu. And you do that by holding down the mode button. And then they use the D-pad to switch between things. So if I wanted to take the power level down, I can. Engine braking, uh, I really want traction control. Honestly, I want it all the way off, but uh, I have to do that separately. You can adjust traction control and you can adjust ABS between on and off road just by using the D-pad over here on the handlebar. Now, if you wanna turn off either traction control or ABS, I made a whole video on this, but you just have to go to them, hold it down. It's off, you see traction control, just turn off and then you hold down the up button. It asks if you wanna confirm, you can. It's off now, you can see here, no ABS no traction control. Okay, and then to get out of that settings mode, you just hold the mode button down and you can switch between modes freely again. If you switch out of user mode, it will turn the ABS back on. So keep that in mind. You got a gear indicator. And then these are the info screens down here at the bottom. There are four pages. So I've got the first one set to just general information, odometer, average fuel consumption, voltage date. Second one is all the trip A stuff, consumption, average consumption, and then there's trip B. The fourth one I haven't even really messed with. So you can configure this to a bunch of options, which I'll show you when we get into the menu. And the fuel gauge is here. And like I said, it can be in different places depending on how you have your main screen set up. So let's pop into the menus so I can show you all the options that are available. The way you go into the menu is you hold right on the D-pad on the handlebar, and there are four main menus. So the first one, function riding mode. This is where you adjust the levels in your user setting, the default levels. You have to go out to turn ABS all the way off, but if you want it to default to off-road ABS, you set that here. If you want it to default to no traction control, you set that here, and then those can also be adjusted from the main screen. Uh, if you hold right, so when there's a double arrow like this, that means hold in that direction. If you hold right, it'll let you reset everything to the, the stock configuration. I'm gonna say no. And then we're gonna go back to the left, back out to the previous menu. Okay, quick shifter is here. So you can set, uh, you want it medium, you want it hard, you want it soft, you can turn it off and you can configure it individually for up and down. Uh, the uh, quick shifter I think was originally going to be an option on the US North American bikes, but they ended up including it stock. Shift point, so the tachometer will actually change color to encourage you to shift at whatever point you set this at. So I haven't really figured out exactly where I want it. I just put it at 9,000 because red line is 10,000. And if I'm running at that high and break in, I screwed up and I need to shift. Now you can also turn that functionality off back out. Self-canceling turn signals. This is an on or off. 
Uh, what a cool feature to have on a bike that costs this little amount of money. I was shocked. And then trip A auto reset. I think that's when you get gas, but I'm not sure because I haven't done it yet. You can turn that off so it just keeps counting until you manually reset it or until it auto resets itself. Okay, so that's the function menu. Down to the display menu. This is where the display types come in. So I said there are four different types. These are all the dashboards you can have. So depending on where you want your tachometer, fuel gauge, and speedometer, you can change that on the main screen. In fact, I'll change it to this one just so you can see it when we get back out there. Brightness, you can set it to any level you like, but I just keep it on auto because that way it dims when you turn the headlights on, things like that. Uh, the background, there's multiple colors. So white, black, metallic, and auto, which uh, will change it when it gets dark out. So I've got it set to white right now just because it is easier to see when I'm filming. And favorite information. This is where you can individually adjust what pops up on those four pages on the very bottom of the home screen. So you can see I've got this set to trip A, trip B and then info four, and you can, you just toggle between these pages, but look at all the options you have. Average speed, elapsed time, reserve fuel, you can leave it blank, total mileage, trip, average consumption, ongoing instant consumption, elapsed time, grip angle, voltage, date, all this stuff. So there's tons of options and you can set all of these to whatever you want. It's perfectly customizable. And consumption is your fuel mileage, obviously. So you back out of that into the general menu Date and time, guess what? This is where you set the date and time, shocking. Unit, so if you want it to be miles per hour, uh, so if you're hitting the border between Canada and the US, as an example, you switch to kilometers per hour or back, or vice versa, if you're coming the other direction, you can do Celsius temperature and your fuel consumption is in miles per gallon, or you can switch it to kilometers per liter or whatever. Language, look at all the language options. There's a ton of language options, kind of cool but I'm gonna go back to US English before I accidentally set it in the wrong thing and can't get out of it because I can't understand it. Here's an option to restore everything to default. So it's like a factory reset. Just press over and then if I wanted to do that, I would hold down on the right D-pad button, but I'm not gonna, we're gonna back out of that. And then Bluetooth pairing reset, which I'm not 100% sure what that does because we don't have the app here in North America. I think it has something to do with that. Last menu in here is a service menu. So the top option is maintenance. And this is where you can set your maintenance reminders. So I set this one to 600 miles because that's when the first oil change is. So it counts down from when you put it in. It's not the total mileage. So keep that in mind. So this is how you reset your service indicators. And this is like if you want to do an inspection or valve checks or whatever. So if you have two different service things going on, maybe you put your air filter there. I don't know. Whatever you want, you can do that. Uh, and that's all manually configurable. You can see whatever you want. You can also tell it to just tell you on a specific date because it knows what day it is. The equipment menu. This is where your quick shifter, although you can't do anything, um, control is grip heater and fog lights. There are factory Honda heated grips, which I assume are controlled by this. I have to look into that because that would be neat. Uh, QS initializes, that's like a service thing. And this is where your service kind of codes pop up for the dealer if you're having to take it in for service. So that's just something they deal with. And then my favorite, the credits, like a video game, you can scroll through the regulatory credits. This is just like all their compliance with wireless communication stuff, I think. Okay, and to back out, we're gonna hold left once, and then we're gonna hold left again. And we're on the main screen where you can see it has changed because I changed it to the other display, the sort of, uh, Knight Rider style tachometer over the top of the speedometer. Now, let me show you what the controls look like so you see what I mean when I talk about holding right and holding left. So this is the left grip. All this is at the touch of your finger. So the mode button's here. That's how you switch between those modes and what you hold down to change options on the user mode. Function button here is for like resetting odometers and stuff. And then this is what you navigate with, the D-pad up and down. It's actually called the select switch, I think, according to them. But I call it a D-pad because I'm a gamer at heart. Uh, you got your horn here, turn signals, self-canceling, and hazard lights. And then up on top, this is your headlights, so pop it up, and they're on bright, or you can flash by pulling down trigger style. So that's just a quick and dirty rundown of the menu screen and the electronics and all of the options that you have here on the Transalp 750. So I hope that helped. Make sure that you're subscribed if you're interested in more Transalp 750 content. I'm hoping to get out and do my first ride today or tomorrow, I'll get some off-road in on this thing. So all that's coming, moto camping and more, make sure you're subscribed because I wanna be your internet riding buddy and I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. Thank you for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Uh, thank you. Excellent! Yay!